for Council General, Mr. Lo, and also uh, Hanghai Chairman, Mr. Wang. Um, good morning, welcome to the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur Festival. Uh, Professor Shen is the one I always respect a lot. So when I studied at Stanford in 1990, I think he already the professor. And uh, I'm not a Berkeley student, uh, so that's where I started my first company when I was still a student at Stanford. Uh, so kind of a struggle of four years. Uh, and then uh, restart again, my second company, uh, all in network security space called NetScreen. Uh, and the later next screen we sold for four billion dollars, and then this now is my third company, still in the network security space. Uh, we started in 2000, and now it's about 10 billion dollar company. So my topic, also, uh, that's the only topic I know is really related to the network security, internet security. Uh, actually, we're, like Professor said, he deal with a lot of research. We are more deal with the, the real daily issue actually created about 30, 40 years ago. So that's where you can see internet, the whole architecture protocol start about 40 years ago. So today we still running on the same protocol, same architecture, basically connect all the trust and they point together based on IP address, whether IPv4 or IPv6. But the data on the internet, just connectivity just grows so fast. So the last two years, the data on the internet equivalent to the whole data human history created in, in like a thousand years history there. And also network security business also almost doubled in the last seven, eight years. The reason is really today, the connectivity no longer just based on connections equally together. So you need to deal with different content, different application, different user behind, different device, different location or country. So all this cannot deal with on the standard routing switching technology created about 40 years ago. So that's all internet security deal with it how to deal with content, good or bad, how to deal with all the application, and how to deal with user, different kind of user, device, all this location. So that's how internet security started. So today, internet security count about 10% IT spending. So when I started, Fortinet is probably about 2%. And then like uh, almost 30 years ago, probably less than 1%. You can see the percentage got higher, higher, because more content, more application need to deal with in the network traffic. So my vision is really in the next 20, 30 years, the internet security on the spending percentage of total IT probably will be increased to 20%, 30%, 40%. Now time, we probably need to change the whole internet architecture, deliver the traffic based on content, based on application, based on all the user, all the device, all the location. That's how security deal is today. So that's what be, become the internet 2.0. So still a lot of business internet security. And uh, so luckily I'm in the space for almost 30 years and there's still another 20, 30 years to grow. So they grow about 10% every year, much higher than IT growing. So it's a lot of opportunity for all the entrepreneur. So uh, internet security also goes through a few phase, few generation. So it's about 30 years ago, uh, internet is relatively simple, application probably just like FTP, telenet, all these kind of things. And even email is pretty much all text. So no active content, no all these uh, attachment graphic, all these kind of things. So that's how internet start, internet security start control who can connect into your company, your trust zone. So we call the connectivity security. It's, that's where the firewall try to control who can connect into your company, your trust environment. And then the VPN try to encrypt the connection. So that's the first generation internet security. Uh, that's my previous two company, uh, ISIS and also NetScreen, all doing the firewall VPN. We actually pioneered using ASIC chip 
uh, building ASIC chip for the firewall VPN technology, which can enhance the performance a lot. Uh, so that's making NetScreen is the leader in the firewall VPN, the first generation network security. And then things changed in the 20 years ago. So what happened 20 years ago is the internet content application become much richer, no longer the simple text. So there's a lot of executable, there's a lot of uh, active content. Thus you can see the virus, computer virus starting kind of uh, uh, take off and a lot of uh, damage to the internet community because uh, you can easily infect the virus come from permitted connection, which you let the connection in come from your friend but somehow there's some virus attached to it. And also even the content is very active, executable. So when you open the content, you also get infected, you get intruded. So that's how we started a second company, I mean my current company called Fortinet. We try to deal with, we call the content security, which not only you need to control the connection, but also you need to look at the content. It's more like today you do the airline travel, Right, so the first generation, you only need to buy a ticket. Doesn't matter what you carry, what your intention is. So the second generation, more like a today's travel, you go to the airline, go to the airport, they need to screen your luggage, hey, what's inside? They need to do the x-ray scan, see, hey, what's your carry? Any weapon, any other things? So that's what we call the content security. Look beyond the connection, look inside the content. But it's much more difficult. We have to deal with what we call unstructured data. Because uh, due to the connection, you only look at the internet header, which is really structured, where is the source IP, destination, or the port member. But doing the content, you need to look at inside. What's the virus, what's the intrusion, what's the spam email, all the other things. Much more difficult. So, but luckily, <coughs> we, uh, we recognize this. We started early, and we're the pioneer, we're the leader. Uh, so we are um, we're doing quite well. So you can see today the content security already replaced about 90% of the first generation firewall VPN. Now 90% internet security all go to this second generation. They do the content and the application inspection. They want to call UTM or next generation firewall basically looking beyond the connection, look inside the content. Uh, <coughs> Fortinet is the leader, also pioneer. We are probably about 30% global deployment and are still doing well. Um, so the key things really, we feel we're doing well, what's differentiating us really, uh, we kind of are using the same trick again. We're building ASIC chip from day one to improve in the performance, to lower the cost. So even the same function you can really improve in a lot of performance costs. That's the lot of ideas a lot of bigger companies also using today. Like you can see the NVIDIA, they're building the GPU for the specific application, handle the graphic, handle all these other things, AI. The same thing like a Google TPU, and also Facebook doing their own chip, Apple doing their own chip. Because once you have a certain application chip to deal with certain yeah. calculation, computation of application, you can improve in the performance easily 10 to 100x. At the same time, lower the cost a lot. So that's compared to the same software running in the general purpose CPU, you have a seven to eight years advantage compared to the general purpose CPU running the software. So that's the uh, specific a chip, ASIC chips advantage. But of course, there's other, other, other issue. You have to deal with a very high cost, big investment, take a long time to build. But once you have the technology, it's a huge advantage. That's also because it's an entrepreneur festival, you can look at the, the whole space a little bit. So today, there's about 2,000 internet security funded by the VC. Every year, average probably about 300 come into the space. But not quite many can go to the billion dollar level. So less than five go to the billion dollar level. So what's the reason? And it's a very fast growing space, it's a big space. Why so many companies uh, being stay so small cannot go to the next stage? And the, the space is so fragmented, even the leader, none of the company can count more than 20% of the space. So it's a very, very fragmented space. I feel there's a few reasons. Right, first, uh, there's a lot of uh, 
dynamic, a lot of new things come up on the internet, internet applications. So the security company need to be very dynamic, very innovative, and need to react very, very quickly. So once the company gets bigger, it's difficult to keep up all the change. So whenever you stay in the internet security, you need to keep up all the innovation, all the change. The second part also, uh, because uh, once you're starting with some niche application or niche security, that's I say 90% or more than 90% company, they all starting from detect the internet issue, security issue. We call the detection stage. That's the first stage. I say 90, 95% company only do certain application detections. You know, something get into my network, certain application has some problem. So that's the most easy stage. So 90 some percent company only into this stage. But that's not enough. You have so many different applications, so many different traffic. And uh, so once you get all this alarm message or something wrong, something <coughs> uh, happened on my application, on my data, once you deal with it, that's the other issue for the system administration. A lot of human has to be involved. Let's go to the second stage we call the prevention stage and remediation. That's where you need to have the machine help you stop the intrusion, take out the malware, take out the virus. That's what we call the prevention. But prevention has to be inline, has to be uh, stop all the bad traffic automatically. That's have the performance requirement, also have the low force positive requirement. That's much more engineer work compared to just detect something, tap into the traffic. Even you can only detect 1% of the problem, you're still successful. But prevention, you, you can prevent 1%, but you cannot block any good application, any good um, uh, uh, like a application the user use. Otherwise, there will be a lot of compliance. So the prevention is much more difficult. Only about like a three, four percent of company can move to the second stage called prevention in the internet security space. Because you need to have performance, you need to have very low force positive. And then go to the third stage, I call the integration. That's also an other layer challenge. Once you have so many devices, so many different applications, even you do the automatic prevention, you have to deal with so many different devices. How to integrate? That's where a lot of bigger company, if they depend on buying company, um, doing the integration is very, very difficult. Like uh, the big networking company bought my previous company, even they paid a $4 billion, it's very difficult for them to integrate. After a few years, they're very, very struggle. The other big networking company, every year they kind of buy different network security company, try to keep up the change, but also very difficult to integrate together. If you cannot integrate, you cannot simplify the management, you cannot lower the cost. So that's where network security is always a <clears throat> struggle with all the other networking, still follow the Moore's law. They almost double every 18 to 24 months on the performance and uh, on the speed. So let's go to the next stage. So you can look at the integration. I say only three, four company. That's all the billion dollar <clears throat> cybersecurity company. They need to do integration. If they cannot do the integration, they cannot organic grow. They have to acquire company. After acquire company, they still cannot integrate. They need to keep acquire company. So that's the thing facing all this space. It's a very big space, dynamic space, but if you cannot integrate different technology, different using well, you cannot organic growth. And then the next stage, uh, the cybersecurity on average is about 100 times more expensive deal with the same support, same traffic compared to the routing switching. It's a very expensive device, it's a very expensive service, and also very slow, very costly. So that's where the performance is always the issue. Uh, the reason we cannot so widely deploy internet security, separate security, because it's uh, so costly, so difficult to manage, very few experts understand that. So that's how to address the performance, how to address the cost, the value issue is other layer. So I personally believe leverage ASIC chip technology, we can lower the performance, I mean we can lower the cost, we can increase the performance, but somehow we are still the only company in the network security space to develop our own ASIC chip, uh, which gave us some advantage, but also can be costly, can take a long time. Uh, so luckily we started 18 years ago when we found the company. Uh, <clears throat> That's give us some advantage. Now since starting change again uh, in the last few years, so compared to 18 years ago, what's different? 
the trust zone disappear. A lot of people using the mobile device now, a lot of data on the mobile device. A lot of also uh, application go to the cloud. And also there's a future IoT, connect the car, all these kind of things. So you cannot protect which is the trust zone, which is not trust zone anymore. Because the data is everywhere. So that's what we are facing today, uh, how to deal with the new change in the last uh, 10, 15 years in the cybersecurity space. Uh, now we call the infrastructure security, or we call the fabric. So you need to not only deal with certain trust zone and trust zone, you also need to go to the mobile, you need to go to the cloud, go to the IoT, go to the endpoint, go to all this access control to manage all of them together. That's what we call the fabric. So this is called the infrastructure security. More compared to airline travel again, they not only need to screen your luggage, even you try to travel, you intend to travel, they ought to have all your background check. What's your social connection? What's your friend? What's your intention? Where you're going? What's the purpose? That they have to deal with all these things together. Uh, so that's what we call the infrastructure security, or we call the security fabric, or footnote security fabric. Again, I believe in this space, in order to grow bigger, better, deal with infrastructure, you also need to do a better job on the integration. And uh, the three key things, I believe, on the infrastructure security, you need to have a broad coverage. Because today, what you have on endpoint, like your antivirus software on your PC, on your mobile phone, is come from different vendor com compared to the network security. Then compared to the cloud security, compared to email security, compared to web security, it's all come from different vendor. And most of the product not even talk to each other. They cannot kind of um, integrate together. So we have a quite broad service we need to cover. At the same time, you also need to integrate together. So the integration to drive the next stage is the automation. Because in today's environment, when hackers come into your network, less than one second, they can start and take the data away. So it's pretty much impossible for human to react. So you need to automate. You need to have this different endpoint, working together with your network side, working together with your cloud, your IoT, your access control, your different application. So how to integrate depend on how you can automate going forward. So that's where the infrastructure security is even more difficult to deal with compared to the network security. And uh, the challenge really, how to coordinate these different parts of our infrastructure working together. Uh, so that's a challenge facing today. Again, I believe we need to start building things from very beginning, end-to-end -end solution. Uh, that's the key to secure the whole infrastructure. Make sure they cover very broad. They also integrate together. They also be automated to respond to all this attack. Uh, some commercial. Uh, so we protect about 90% of the global top 100 company. Uh, because uh, we have uh, not only security, but also performance cost. There's a huge advantage because the ASIC chip, we call the SPU, security process unit. Um, what's next? Also, I believe connect the car. Uh, I know there's some coverage before. It eventually will also a huge opportunity. Actually, the connect a car opportunity is more than the smartphone because it's the platform has a much bigger business opportunity going forward. And the security is also the number one concern there, just like a smartphone. Uh, so we are also the first company launched a Connect Car Security IoT and uh, starting doing well. So uh, that's the last slice. Uh, so I do believe internet security has a lot of opportunity and a lot of companies start, um, but also you need to, when you build a company, my philosophy, you need to build from ground up like from the chip level, to the OS level, to the hardware system, to the service. And also to deal with infrastructure security, you also need to build end-to-end. -end. From the endpoint, to the network side, to the cloud, to the IoT, to the different application. That can make integration better, automation better, and also can drive your long-term growth. Because this space has a lot of potential and uh, it's a huge opportunity for everyone. Okay, thank you.